Hello, people of YouTube. My name is Steve Gray. This is Gray's Guitars. Thank you for watching. Today we are talking about Paul McCartney, The Beatles. 50 years ago, this bass was stolen, and there was a project to get it back, and he got it back. After about 55 years of this bass missing, uh, this instrument, I believe, was used on Let It Be. Um, a couple other songs. We'll go through the article here. But that is just crazy to me that this thing still exists. Because if I found this bass in my attic, you know, and I realized it was sitting there for 50 years, and I realized it belonged to Paul McCartney, I don't know if I'd be able to give it back to him. I'll, I'll, I'll be honest with me, with you. Because that would just be a very, very cool piece of rock and roll history, of music history, and the chance of you ever touching anything Paul McCartney owned again uh, would be next to zero. But let's go ahead and take a look here. So Paul McCartney reunited with Stolen Hoffer bass after more than 50 years. Following an appeal of information by the Lost Bass Project last year, the instrument is now back where it belongs. So he, he got it back. He got it back. So it's official. The bass that was used in the Beatles' Let It Be sessions has been found 50 years after it was stolen off the back of a van in London. Last September, the Lost Bass Project announced their mission to reunite the Beatles with his beloved 1961 Hofner 500-1 bass in search of the Telegraph and Rolling Stone journalist Scott Jones described as the most exciting challenge I've ever faced. You know, something like this, a bass, 50 years, you'd, you'd think, oh, it's either on the black market in someone's collection or it got destroyed. You know, 50 years is a long time. Uh, breaking the news in a Facebook post last night, the, the Fab Five revealed that the bass was returned to McCartney last September. Uh, so he's actually had it for a little while. Uh, Roderi Guest inherited the bass from his dad, who recently passed away, and the bass had been previously sitting in the attic of the Hastings, England, apparently restrung right-handed, and he not knowing who it once belonged to for all these years, the Post explained. Source says that the family who found the Hofner in the loft while cleaning a house are said to approach Sir Paul and reps at his home. The guitar had been inspected and authenticated as genuine. When it was found, the family said they had no idea at the treasure in their attic at first. Uh, MACA has also confirmed the news on the website following the last year's Lost Bass Project, Paul's 1961 501 bass guitar, which was stolen in 1972, has been returned. The guitar has been authenticated by Hoffner, and Paul uh, is incredibly grateful to all those involved. According to the Lost Bass Project, the Hoffner is completed and still with the, its original case, though it will need some repairs to make it playable again, which makes sense. It's been sitting in an attic for so many years. There it is right there. It actually looks pretty solid condition. Um, so someone strung it up right-handed. It was a left-hand bass. Uh, the reason that Paul McCartney got this bass in the first place was because there wasn't a lot of left-handed things at the time. He couldn't afford a Fender, uh, and essentially this is what he could afford. I think he said he paid like 30 pounds for it back when he got it, so, you know, I think U.S., that's like the uh, comparable to like $40 or something, but, you know, inflation and all that, so it's probably several hundred in, in today's money. Um, but uh, that's what he could afford back then, that's what he bought. You know, that's when they first started out. The left-handed violin bass was the first McCartney ever owned, uh, hastily purchased for, yeah, 30, 30 euros in Hamburg in 1961 when the bassist uh, Stuart uh, Sufifel dropped out of the Beatles and Paul was elected to fill in for him. After the bass went missing, uh, McCarty purchased a new Hofner in 1963 and continued to use it throughout the rest of the Beatles' career. Uh, so let's go ahead and look on Instagram. Uh, let's see. Of course, it's not going to let me do that without logging in. But uh, yeah, a couple of pictures. Really cool that this thing is still around in original condition. You know, it didn't get destroyed. It didn't get beat up. Sure, it needs some work. But... It's crazy that after just all that time, he finally got it back. And not only did he get it back, there's actually double good news, because I want to go on to read this second story about a Gibson Les Paul Custom that was stolen and returned to this man on his 50th birthday. So it's actually kind of a double whammy, because you have two people that got their guitar stolen many years ago, and they're both getting them back. Obviously, one being a little bit more famous than the other, but let's take a look at this one, too. So watch the emotional moment 
a guitarist is reunited with the stolen Les Paul after nearly three decades. So this was gone for 30 years. The guitarist's two daughters presented him with a priceless gift for his 50th birthday, his long-lost Gibson 1981 Les Paul Custom. So this thing is a boat anchor, I can tell you that right now. Just as Paul McCartney, right here, has been reunited with a stolen Hofner bass after 50 years, we got another reunion to talk on our heartstrings. After nearly three decades, the guitarist reunited with the long-lost Gibson Les Paul for its 50th birthday. Stolen 27 years ago, not as long as Paul's, but still, almost three decades, uh, the guitarist's daughter made their personal mission to track down the 1981 Gibson Les Paul custom for their father. One of the daughters explained the situation earlier this month on TikTok, 27 years ago, my dad had his prized possession, 1981 Gibson Les Paul stolen out of the back of his truck, she explained. For his 50th birthday, we wanted to finally reunite him with his guitar. The daughters were on the hunt for nearly five years, um, ardociously searching for the Gibson serial number month after month. We finally found it sometime last April-ish, the daughter says, after keeping it a secret from our dad. He finally got his gift this year. Obviously, they wanted to do it for his 50th birthday, so they hold, held off on giving it to him immediately. Uh, the TikTok captured a beautiful moment which the father is presented with the Gibson. Shut the F up, he immediately says when he sees the case, only to be hit with another wave of emotion as he clicks it open and discovers his beloved guitar. Uh, as he tearfully asks how his daughters found it, you can't help but feel up and giddy and joy. Let's go ahead and just play it. Will it play? Let's see. Yeah, it's not. It's being a pain in the butt. Uh, but anyway, the daughters go on to explain why the father is left so speechless by the by the Gibson. A year ago, Dad asked to plan a party. Within 10 minutes, we text each other. We just have to find that effing guitar. One daughter explained before jokingly add, adding, don't lose it this time. <laughs> the other daughter allowed more insight on the guitar's significance on a Reddit post. The guitar was my dad's everything. He recounted the 600 to 700 hours he spent playing the guitar uh, in the Marines, sitting in the back barracks, going out, doing shows. He played the thing all the damn time, she writes. When it got stolen, he, he said he generally felt empty as if he had lost a part of himself. After years of searching on consignment websites, I found the guitar last April. She goes on to explain the natural finish made identifying it quite easy, even though the guitar had been lost longer than I had been alive. Uh, so many of our friends and family donated to help us buy it back. Even some friends who had never met my dad and my sisters and I kept the guitar a secret until his 50th birthday. Uh, so my dad is at the found foundation of all the music I hold very near and dear to my heart. It was an honor to reunite him with the guitar. I generally had accepted that he would never see again, she concluded. So that is just, it's, it's just nice. Yeah, look at this is him playing it back in the day. Yeah, you don't see a lot of natural Gibson Les Paul customs, and if you have a, but regardless, if you have a serial number, there it is, right there. Look at that bad boy. Um, if you have a serial number, uh, you know, write it down. That's that's something I tell people. If you have valuable instruments, so I'm talking any guitar, probably five hundred dollars and up, and you don't maybe you don't live in the best area, you know, you never know what happens. Write write it, all the serial numbers down, put a picture in your safe, or just take pictures of them too. That is another option. Is take a pic picture of all of the serial numbers uh, of the guitars you own, instruments you own, any, really anything valuable. Uh, because heaven forbid that thing gets stolen. Uh, that is, it's very hard to get a serial, and an imprinted serial number, uh, which is what a lot of guitars do, um, off of a guitar. You know, if it's if it's a water slide decal like Fender does, that's a little bit easier because you could technically sand it off and put a new one on there. Uh, and, and everybody would be none the wiser. But something like a Gibson where it's physically imprinted on the back of the headstock, uh, you can't get that off. Um, I guess you could technically get it off if it was like um, one of the R series, one of the reissues, because I think those are printed. But um, that's just keep track of the serial numbers. That's that's what I, I highly recommend taking pictures, keeping track of the serial numbers, knowing what you have, uh, because sometimes shit hits the fan, unfortunately, and some you steal something. You know, maybe you get in an accident, somebody sells it by accident. Who the heck knows? You want it back. Years later, you know, oh, you're hurting now, you need to get your car fixed, your mortgage paid, whatever, that happens, you got to sell an instrument or two, and then you want to try to find it and track it down years later, uh, then you have the serial number and maybe you get lucky. Uh, so that's that's what happened. So two great emotional stories. Uh, happy to see Paul got his guitar back. This dad got his guitar back for his birthday. Uh, I'm sure both of them are like, holy crap, I never thought I'd see this thing again. You know, it's basically, it's one of those things where once it's gone, it's gone. 
and the chance of you getting it back are slim to none, unfortunately. You don't know who stole it. You don't know how many times it switched hands because it sounds like this guitar probably was not in the hands of the original person that stole it. Most likely what happened is the person stole it, immediately went to a music store and was like, give me money, or drove an hour or two out of town, maybe put it on uh, some sort of ad. Uh, 27 years ago, I think Craigslist was still a thing. Uh, almost 30 years ago, so definitely could have thrown it on Craigslist or, or um, the, you know, your, your local buy, sell, whatever, newspaper ad, who the heck knows what they were doing back then, um, and got rid of it fast, because, you know, if you, something like that, a Gibson Les Paul Custom, most of them are worth minimum $3,000, so if you say, hey, 1500 bucks, someone's gonna buy it off of you and probably not think twice, but uh, there it is, there you have it, two cool stories, two cool uh, people getting their instruments back after many years of not having them. Let me know your thoughts in the comments down below. Subscribe, notification bell, like, share, all that fun stuff. And I will see you again next Tuesday. As always, have a good one.